she wasn't a celebrity she was nobody new locally she was nobody in my neighborhood nobody i seen at a gas station i don't know who this person was what's up you guys it's your girl it's Tati K, and i'm back with another video if you haven't already go ahead like comment share subscribe to this video Hit that post notifications bell down below so you know if I, whenever I post. Follow me on all my social medias. And y'all, we're in the final day of week one of Vlogtober. I'm so happy and um, just so happy. Thank you guys for supporting my videos this far. I really appreciate it. And let's just keep it pushing. We got, ooh, what is day seven? Ooh, we got 23 more days to go. Ooh. It's okay, we gonna make it though, we gonna make it, we gonna make it. Anyways, let's get into this story time. Alright you guys, so the title of this story is uh, titled, Who Is She? And this is a paranormal story. This story takes place when I was about 20 years old, so a few years ago. I would, from time to time, have very interesting dreams to say the least. I would constantly dream about this girl named aurora and she had a very distinct face she never really spoke in the dreams or said much she was just always there the dreams kept happening over and over and over and over and over nothing was ever said in those dreams i would just always see her in different dreams in different settings at different times now i don't know anybody named aurora i've never seen this woman before in my life however Dreams have meanings, right? So one night I had a dream about this mysterious woman. And I woke up frustrated with the fact that I could not figure out what these dreams meant. One frustrating thing about a dream is when you don't know the meaning. And you know it has some type of meaning. I wrestled with myself for a while, weeks, weeks, months, because the dreams just kept happening. I even tried to Google or search for somebody with this name on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok. I searched the whole nine yards, could not find out who this woman was. She wasn't a celebrity. She was nobody I knew locally. She was nobody in my neighborhood. Nobody I seen at a gas station. I don't know who this person was. Later on that year, October 2009. Halloween to be exact. I went down to the gas station to pick up a few items. Just some drinks, snacks, just something to chill around the house. I'm not a big Halloween advocate. You know, I, I, I'm older, I'm in my 20s. I'm just chilling at the house. Um, Don't come knocking on my door because I'm not opening. You know, I'm just, I'm a relaxed person. I'm very chill, laid back. I go to the clerk. I pay for my items, check out, bag and receipt, and that's it. I go to my car, looking at the receipt, making sure I got everything I needed, and that's that. I crank up my car, and I'm heading to the exit of the gas station. My phone starts to ring. It rang about two or three times before I got a chance to grab it. So I stopped. There was no cars in front of me, no cars behind me, no cars anywhere. So I figured I had time to answer the phone call to see who it was. I'm not a texter and driver. I don't like to talk on the phone and drive. So I put the car to stall for this moment. Pick up the phone. I answer it. Hello? Silence. Hello? Silence. Suddenly a car ends up coming behind me. They might have been there for about 15-30 seconds. Didn't notice it because I was focused on the phone to try to see who it was calling me. It was a number I was unfamiliar with. Wasn't familiar with the area code. Never seen this number before. It's clearly not my contact list. I, I'm, I was perplexed. I wanted to know who it was. Could have been a telemarketer. I don't know. Either way, the car behind me grew impatient and if they just would have gave me two seconds, I would have moved. They end up zipping around in front of me. And as they're merging onto the highway, smack! Another car hits them. They T-bone the car. In a panic, I immediately call, grab my phone and I call 911. I say we need a police, paramedics, fire truck. There's been a wreck. I'm giving the location and everything. I'm concerned. I don't know if anybody's okay. But I noticed nobody's coming out of either of the cars. About five minutes later, paramedics, fire trucks, policemen, everybody comes. I explain what happened, the situation. I noticed that the police go to the cars, paramedics go to the cars, but they don't seem like they're in a rush to pull anyone out. 
this concerns me. I'm asking the officer, you know, well, what's going on? Why isn't anybody trying to get the drivers out of the car? A paramedic with the officer comes by and they tell me that both drivers have passed away. I sat there in awe. Is it cold to say, but at the same time I was relieved? Because I thought to myself, had I not stopped for those few seconds to pick up the phone to see who was calling me, that could have been me. I pondered on that for a while. So I get back in my car, I send my condolences, and I drive home. On my way home, the whole wreck kept replaying and replaying and replaying in my mind. And the fact that that number called me, and to this day, it, 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 in this moment, I don't know who, I did not recognize the number, I don't know who it was, but I felt an overwhelming urge to tell them what happened and thank you. So when I get home, I call the number. It rings, rings, rings. Nobody answers. So it goes to voicemail. And the automated message says, Hi, this is Aurora. I'm so sorry I can't make it to the phone right now, but if you could please leave your name and number, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. The complete and utter disbelief I was in. Aurora? I'm thinking there's no way. There's no way. This, there's, there's, a, there's no way. That's not a common name. Like, I'm thinking, nah, I'm thinking, it's got to be a coincidence. There's just no way. I'm in, I'm in utter disbelief because how? How? It was just a dream. It was a dream. So the next day, I, I still wake up in shock, disbelief, all oh, I, I said, I have to find out who this person was. I call the number again, but this time someone picks up the phone. I explain who I am. I explain the situation that took place and that happened. And I told them I'm thankful that they called me that day. The person on the other end, they said they send their condolences at, you know, to me as to like what I witnessed and what happened. However, they did not call me. You cannot believe how discombobulated and confused I was. I'm like, but I got a call from this number. They said, huh, I'm not sure how you got a call from this number, but I'm, I'm almost sure I called nobody that day. Nonetheless, I still tell, tell the woman thank you and I, I ask if I could have her Facebook. Just, just to, I just wanted to see exactly who she was and, you know, it just, I was just overwhelmingly grateful. She tells me her name and she gives me her Facebook. Mind you, she tells me her name is not Aurora, it's something else like Kimberly. And I'm just like, oh, okay, well, thank you, Kimberly. She tells me her Facebook. And I searched her up, and you will not believe me. But when I clicked on her Facebook profile, she was the same Aurora from my dreams. That very distinct face, that was her. I don't know how, I don't know who, what, when, why, what? But I guess it's here to say that pay attention to your dreams because they do carry meaning. Maybe, Maybe you could even save your life. life. All right, you guys, the second story time I have for you all is a paranormal story time, and it is titled, that one house in Corinth, New York. I used to be a paranormal investigator and Corinth, New York definitely has this history in the paranormal. Definitely. However, there was one particular house that was owned by a lady and her family for generations. From what I was aware and what I was told in the history of the house was there were two family members that had passed away. At least two that they knew of. The lady who was the owner of the house would often call me and my partner over to investigate because she felt like there was a presence wandering around the house and she wasn't sure who they were or what they wanted. While being concerned for her daughter is understandable, she felt like her daughter was becoming possessed and this was due to the fact that suddenly her daughter would frequently have mood swings and become very depressed. So me understanding and being who I am, I decided to come over again. And mind you, this is not the first time I have investigated her house. This is about the fourth or fifth time. The times prior, me and my partner, we hadn't found too much out of the ordinary. Nothing to be too concerned about. So on our investigation at the house, we looked around, we searched, 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 as usual. We found nothing. We decided to stay a little longer and we sat at the kitchen table. We began talking about the history of the house and what could it possibly be that's disturbing the owners so bad. As we're sitting at the table, suddenly it feels as though it drops 20 degrees. Me and my partner, we look at each other. I'm like, do you feel that? 
my partner's just like, yeah. I pull out my EPV and I start scanning the area, seeing if I can find any presence, any movement, see what's going on. I remember that I had an on-hand thermostat, a portable thermostat. So just to double check, we weren't losing it. I test the temperature above the table. It says 70 degrees. I then lower the thermostat to below the table, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Because this was now confirmed, we knew something was off. We started walking around looking to see if we could feel any presence. Nothing. We went, sat back to the table, and all of a sudden we felt something overwhelming around us. We pull out the EPV again, and we have something. Something trying to communicate with us. We called the lady of the house immediately. She had gone upstairs. We called her downstairs to just, just to see if she felt the same thing we did. And she confirmed that she did, and she had for a while. I try to hear or make out on our machine and devices what 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 did this person want why were they still in the house why were they lingering around and who were they we asked the owner of the house did she have any questions to see if we could figure out who it was and she reminded us that quite a few years ago her mother passed away at this table so we asked her did she have any questions for her mother if this was her mother and she said yes she said when she was a child that there was a specific squirrel that would come running around in their backyard. She wanted us to ask her mother what was the name of that squirrel. We sat in silence for a moment just to see if we could pick up any sound or any motion, anything. After about 10-15 minutes, we turned off our machines and we decided to pack it up and leave. We told her that we would get back with her in a few days once we studied the audio to see what was said. She said thank you and that she would be looking forward to hearing from us. When I got back home, I kept playing the audio over and over and over. And it was very staticky. So I decided to put on a headset. And it then became a little bit clearer. I decided to play with the pitch of sound. And eventually I could make out what the spirit was saying. Now I don't know if this is right, but I kept hearing something like, Nuthead? Huh. I didn't want to forget this. And I decided to bring the audio with me just in case. But I, a few days, you know, I decided to write down the name or whatever this was that I received from the audio. The next day I went over to the lady's house and I asked her, um, by chance, do you think that you're in the right headspace to listen to this audio that I recorded to see if maybe we have something here? She said sure, she agreed to it. I gave her the headset and I had her listen closely. Immediately, she broke down to her knees and started crying, bawling. She was unconsolable. I decided to then take the paper I had wrote the name down on and show it to her. It got worse. She said that was the name of the squirrel that used to run around in their backyard when she was young. She then knew that the spirit of the house was her mother. Believe it or not, it gave her a sense of peace, now knowing Okay, y'all, this is the final story. If you hear any noise, that's my mother in the background talking. All right, you guys, this is the final story to uh, the first week of Vlogtober, and it is a glitch in the matrix story, and it is titled Missing Ramen. About 20 years ago, I was making ramen, my favorite meal, quick, easy, consumable. I opened a pack of ramen, and I set it to the side. I put a pot on the stove, I had an old-fashioned stove, by the way. You know, the ones with the hoods. I took a pot of water and I set it on the stove. I turned on the eye and I waited for the water to boil. I'm pulling the pack of ramen out of the package. I set it on top along with the pack of seasoning. I turn away for a second to wash a few dishes. And as I turn back around, I see that the water on the stove is boiling. I look to the side and see that the pack of ramen is gone. All that's sitting there is the pack of seasoning. I thought it was weird. I was perplexed. I didn't know if I had misplaced it. I'm checking the fridge, the cabinets, the drawers. I I'm checking. I checked the trash can. I checked the floor. No sign of the pack of ramen besides the seasoning. And where else would I have gotten the seasoning from if I didn't open a pack of ramen? I decided to eventually give up my search and I opened a new pack of ramen. Put it in the bowl, put it in the pot, and let it boil 
cooks and I eventually eat my meal and I go on about my day. Throughout the day I was still puzzled by the fact of what could have possibly happened to that pack of noodles? Anyway, time goes on, days go by, and eventually it leaves my mind. It's now the weekend and I decide it's time to do a little spring cleaning. So I start cleaning up my house, I clean my bathrooms, my living room, my bedroom, I take a shower, and the last place I decide to clean is the kitchen. I had already mopped and washed the dishes a few days prior, but I needed to wipe down the stove top. I lift up the stove top to clean up any trash that may have fallen through the eye of the stove any time I may have been cooking. And there I see my unopened pack of ramen. Now mind you, a few days ago I did lose my ramen, but how could it have fallen between the eyes of a fire? I had the stove on, how did it fall between the eye? You can only imagine how flustered I was at the situation. There's no way that while the stove was on, the whole pack of ramen fell through the eye. There's no way if the stove was off, the whole pack of ramen could have fell through the eye. I don't know if I'm losing my marbles. I don't know what's going on, but I picked up the pack from under the hood and I set it to the side and I just stared at it. Unopened, that pack sat. I didn't know what to make of the situation. And to this day, I still don't know what to make of the situation, but some things I guess are just left to be a mystery all right you guys that's all i have for y'all today i hope you all enjoyed these story times for this first week of October. we finally we got the first week down okay we got the first week down i'm so excited i have much 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 more content coming your way um if you haven't already, go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe to this video. Hit that post notifications bell down below so you're notified whenever I post. Um, follow me on all my social medias. Follow me on all my social medias. That's where you guys get the tea, the update, what's going on behind the scenes. Follow me on all my social medias. And I can't wait to see you all in my next videos. I'm so excited for this upcoming week. Week 2 is... Week two is my week of reactions, and I can't wait to see you all there. We're going to be reacting to short horror films together. And yeah, join me over there uh, during week two, and I can't wait to see you all until next time. Love you guys. Bye. Stay spooky. <laughs>